All right, welcome to NyxCon 2024, day two. I see uh, not everyone has woken up yet. I hope you're all well rested. Uh, I'm not, but that's okay. Um, we'll start with uh, the Nix Constitutional Assembly panel, and I'm just gonna hand off the mic to Ron. Let's welcome everyone on stage. Beta tester for the morning. Again, welcome everybody. Super excited to see you all here. 9 a.m. on a Saturday is a prime time. I'm sure everyone's pumped, caffeinated, really ready to go. That's why we have like the most exciting piece of the day right now. Uh, so we're going to start with the NCA panel. First of all, Sylvan is going to do a short presentation about the NCA, and then we're going to go into it. So think about your hardest questions that you want to hit people at 9.05 in the morning and do that. They won't like hold it against you. Uh, one of the things I did want to call out is, again, super excited to be here. We had the State of the Union panel yesterday, and actually, I did want to call out that during the financial slide statement, I wasn't sure how, how explicit it was that the folks on the bottom line are all sponsors of our community, right? So that includes Flying Circus and Fastly and a few folks on that line. So again, that's a huge shout out to them. So thank you to those folks that are making a lot of these things happen, uh, specifically also Flying Circus on the discourse. So with that said, we're gonna kick off with Sylvan. I'm gonna skedaddle over to the right and you'll see me in a minute. All right, oh, and this is already working, very nice. Also, I, I prepared this like uh, at like 4 a.m. tonight or so. So uh, don't expect like something perfectly polished, but I try, I try. Um, so yeah, uh, I didn't really expect to, to present something like this this year, but I, I guess here we are. Uh, so it's not a technical talk uh, compared to pretty much every other one. Um, and you might not have thought much about these, these things, community values and project governance. But they're, they're part, they've always been there, just very implicit and, and very uh, kind of underspecified. Um, as projects get established, uh, they're, these are very implicit at the start. So like uh, your initial community might be just you and your colleague working on a project. But as the community grows, there is, you need to be more explicit about this. You, you might need to evolve governance over time uh, to ensure long-term sustainability. And so, uh, yeah, that's kind of uh, why we need this now. And, and right, so over like the past couple of years, we've really noticed this where uh, there's, there, there's some, like some, some decisions are lacking. We, we need to improve some things on governance, on how decisions are made, things like that. Um, yeah, and so a couple of months ago, the board uh, appointed us the next constitutional assembly. Uh, six of us are here right now. Uh, one person is missing. Um, but yeah, to rework uh, governance of the next project and uh, establish a community-based governance structure for that. Now we're almost done with this mission and they're here to talk about our work. Um, yeah, so I've been selected to make this introduction. Uh, we're gonna do questions, and but you can also ask us throughout NixCon as well or, or after NixCon as well. And we're, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, we have a repository where there's uh, kind of all about us, um, yeah. So, um, but before we actually look at governance, uh, we kind of identified the need to, to kind of really establish and, and write down the values of our community. And what, what are our values? What are these useful for? They're used, they can be used for guiding decision-making, making sure that everybody is moving in the same direction. And uh, so like the idea would be that anybody in the entire community can invoke these and get decisions to be reevaluated if they don't align with the values um, without regard to their rank or title or uh, so really anyone should be able to do that. And thanks to uh, Career Tell, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, uh, we have these values on the Nexus homepage now. It's in a, you can go to nexus.org, there's a tab at the top as well. Um, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly here, but there's more to them. Um, so please go check them out, get familiar with them, share it around, and make use of them. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to briefly through this. It might be a bit, it, it's, it's a lot of things, but I'll try to get the gist of it. So respect and civility, 
It's a very basic thing. It's, it's about conduct. It's that uh, we respect everybody, no matter their identities, circumstances, uh, what, they, what their contributions are, what their status is. Uh, everybody should respect everybody else, and everybody has a right to be respected. Um, that kind of idea. Uh, sometimes also, uh, you need to, uh, well, civility is a hard thing to define. Um, <laughs> kind of something uh, that we came up with is to say that sometimes we need to pro prioritize project health over our individual interests as well. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, and also another part of this is that people in like leadership, uh, there's higher expectations in these positions as well. Um, but yeah, you can read about that more on the website. I'll move, move on here. Uh, another kind of core value, these are headers, um, but the, the statements under the headers are, have kind of the same weight, so uh, this isn't the entire value. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we are here as individuals, uh, and we can gain trust by doing work, and trust and status by doing work. Um, organizations can gain prestige by funding individuals, um, and our, our priorities working together with a, with a vibrant community and a diverse community as well. Um, and so that's like, I guess an example would be uh, if someone just comes along and is like, hey, I want to work on this thing, picks it up and, and does a good job maintaining it, then uh, we can trust this person with this component and, and they can uh, take ownership of it and uh, yeah, kind of that evolution. Another one is free software and choice over uh, lock-in. Um, so that's, I mean, these should be, the, the goal of these is to be fairly generic, and so nobody should be like super surprised about any of these, I hope. Um, but yes, yeah, so and next projects should always remain free software. Um, we also want to work with the wider free software community, um, but also we need to respect that uh, like packages and next packages are sometimes not al always free, and we don't want to disallow that. That's uh, That's... Uh, that's something we, we do value as well. Um, another one is distributing decision-making very widely. Like we are uh, a community or various overlapping communities as well. There's, uh, there's not a single centralized uh, place where decisions get made. We need asynchronous communication. We need clear ownership, um, uh, very local decision-making empowerment. Um, yeah, and uh, there's also one kind of interesting aspect here is that uh, we, like, sometimes we have different goals, but we should try to still work together on our shared goals. Uh, if we have independent goals, we can work on these independently in, in a non-conflicting way as well, but let's try to get the, like, the, to work together on the things we can work together on. Um, yeah, that's that. Another one is automation over process and toil. Um, they're like, I mean, we are a large project. Uh, contributors have very limited time, limited uh, energy, and so we need to build automation to make things uh, go smoother and, and to unblock people's time, uh, let the computers do the work for us. And I've talked a bit about this yesterday in State of the Union, uh, where I'm working on a bunch of automation things, that's kind of, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, another one is stable evolution over stagnation or chaos. Um, so, like, this is how Nix came to be, like, a lot of great ideas have been made, uh, and this is why we're here. Uh, but also, it needs to be a good balance, because you, you can't just evolve and experiment the whole time. You also need these stable components. Uh, like, you experiment, and then you, you try to figure out what works well and stabilize that thing, so it's reusable and stable, so people can rely on it. Um, yeah, uh, that's... Uh, oh, and there's also... Uh, goes a bit in, not just in, into code, but also into like the uh, leadership and uh, contributors. So like you, leaders have a duty to, to find new contributors, to, to promote them, to support them, and eventually step aside for them. Uh, that's also an evolution of, I guess, the, the people uh, kind of running the, the, the thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, these are, these are the six kind of headers of the values. Um, uh, yeah, and with this done, the next thing we kind of focused on was uh, the actual constitution. So it's, it's called a constitutional assembly because we should write the constitution. <laughs> and so that's what we did. And we used these values uh, to, to inform ourselves about 
what it should look like and uh, things about that. Um, so it's very, really quite deep, like there's a lot of details in the constitution, so this is like a super short overview. Um, but the, the basic thing here, the new thing here is the steering committee. And so the steering committee, a group of seven people that get elected by the contributors of the official projects. And uh, in turn, the steering committee then governs these official projects. So they're empowered to do things like uh, change processes, uh, change teams, um, things like uh, being the, like an escalation point, the final escalation point for conflicts, uh, and more. Uh, you can read about all of that in the Constitution, uh, which is here in our repository. Um, yeah, but uh, the SC should delegate as many things as possible. They shouldn't really do a lot of work, but rather just ensure it gets done. Um, yeah. Uh, then the Foundation Board will keep supporting the official projects as it has uh, always done, but uh, we have this new kind of dynamic where the, uh, the board members will be approved by the steering committee as well. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's, the base, that's the basics of it. Um, and yeah, how do elections work? So we're running an election right now. So that's the 2024 one. We have a separate uh, repository, which is all about the election. Um, so we have, uh, we have 800 voters uh, based on a criteria we, we determined based on the number of con commits. Um, this was determined we, we needed a way to automatically uh, like figure out a, a good heuristic to, for, the, uh, for the contributions. But also we, have a, an we had an exception process where people could say, oh, my, this heuristic doesn't really count me well, I, but I've contributed you know, that amount. Um, yeah, so we ended up, we had a nomination phase of about three weeks. We ended up with 23 candidates. Yeah, you can also look at them at the link here. Um, then we had a voting phase. Well, well we, we, should be, we should be here now at the first steering committee, but... Um, our voting platform has kind of decided to, to have a date of loss for our entire election. So uh, we broke their 18-year record of no data loss. So thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so, so we, had to, we had to start it over, unfortunately. Uh, the plan was to have the steering, steering committee, the first one just before NextCon. That didn't happen. So now we, we just have to add another two weeks for the voting phase. Um, but yeah, like a week after NextCon, um, we should have the first steering committee. Um, we'll need to mess around a bit with CIVS still to figure out the results, but not looking forward to that, but <laughs> it's going to be fine. Um, yeah, and uh, that's it for my short uh, presentation before the panel. Um, yeah, thank you, and we'll take some questions. Awesome. Thank you, Sylvan. Yes. Thank you. All right, cool. So we have about 15 minutes before Berber is literally going to lift me off stage. Um, and the main thing that we wanted to do is kind of really open q and I will do a quick, I, I won't do like a really deep introduction of the NCA panel themselves just because we're slightly out of time. So I will test you guys if you can, uh, you know what, I won't test you guys. Uh, we have Danielle, Edith, Ryan, Sarah, uh, Lasselis, and Sylvan up on stage with us. Uh, we're going to say virtually hi to Michael who's been also spending an insane amount of time to make this happen. And I'll just kick us off. So the way this is going to work is that we asked uh, folks if they have questions online yesterday and a few days before that. There was a few questions that got votes. But I'm just warming you up so you have ideas of how hard to hit the NCA with really tough ones. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Ask the questions that are meaningful, right? Be obviously courteous and maybe listen to some of the things that Sylvan had on stage earlier. Um, so one of the first things I think that folks were wondering uh, from the community in general is uh, how, how did things operate internally inside of the NCA? Obviously, you guys kept it very transparent as much as you could, but at the end of the day, I personally know that there were four hour long meetings that you know, no one actually wanted to sit in. Uh, how did it work? I'll do this as sort of the outsider because it was it was a very fun experiment uh, experience going into this as an outsider. Um, so we had we had four hours of meetings each week, 
and there were lots and lots of discussions about what the community looked like, what the community aspirations were, what the history of the community had been, where inflection points were in the community, um, what the where we thought different groups and different overlapping communities might have tension, and that led us to the, to start with a conversation about values and what is what is really important and what do we anchor this work on. But generally, it, I think the conversation we have we have to say a huge thank you to Sylvan who did a lot of the organizational operational keeping us moving, um, and then the rest of us were were working to. Um, consider how people moved in this organization and try to help build the minimum rules we needed to bootstrap and get started uh, a community governance that then would have the gravitas and, and um, support of the community as it begins to take off with the steering committee and begins to start changing the things that we've started, because everything we gave was a starting point. Everything we talked about was, let's start here and we'll see how it works. This is, this is an experiment, and you all will end up owning this through your engagement with the new steering committee. Thank you. I can be long-winded. So <laughs> Anyone want to add anything before I move on? This is a lot of people to try and get four hours a week of overlapping calendar <laughs> time in. <laughs> Not to mention the amount of time we all spent talking to like random contributors from all over the world. And I just want to be like, wow, <laughs> we did it. Very cool. Um, so yeah, I can definitely attest to the fact that Sylvan is a beast note taker. I don't know how that happens, but it's a uh, phenomenon. Uh, anyways, all right. So the next question we had, and I hope you guys are warming up. I know. You know, again, it's 9.18, so we're all awake. Um, one of the other questions was kind of maybe, I don't know if it's a controversial one, but can you kind of share some of the larger disagreements that happened before they ended up being resolved? Like, what were they? I mean, I can, I can talk about it. Um, I, I feel like for any, like, major... I, I feel like we didn't, like, have a major disagreement. For any disagreement, we, we just talked about it more, and we're, like, figuring out, like... Where is our disagreement really? Like, uh, did we misunderstand something? Do we have a different view of the community? Does someone know a perspective that we haven't seen before? And through that, we we ended up not not really like I, I don't think we we had like an internal decision procedure for like oh if if we struggle with making a decision we do like a five uh, seven uh, five, uh, or like five supermajority vote or something like that. I don't think we ever ended up using that because in the end we always resolved things just by talking. So, yeah, I, I, I'd say like none, but I, I don't know, maybe that's unbelievable, but <laughs> I, I feel like, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I agree. It was, it was all very much like consensus building uh, as opposed to sort of binary disputes. I, I think, you know, the reaction that I saw from the internet and, and you know, the community when we posted the values was to some extent like, okay, that's boring and obvious, right? <laughs> um, but this represents maybe, I don't know, 200 hours or 300 hours of work from us uh, to arrive at that. And so some of the disagreements we had as they were, were not so much like, you know, I think A and Sylvan thinks not A, right? It was more like, each of these values exists on a spectrum or, or in a multidimensional space, right? And like, we all came to it with a slightly different point in that space. And how do we, how do we find the ideal spot on the spectrum that really represents where the community was? And I think we were all pretty aligned on the idea that this was not about us sort of choosing the best point on the spectrum, but it was about us trying to suss out, like, where does the community stand? Like, how, when we talk to so many people to try to understand this, but like, you know, what exactly, how do we thread the needle on like, open source versus closed source software? You know, with that value, we came to the conclusion that like, you know, you look, you look at Nix packages and it does support people installing and using unfree software, but we also don't want Nix itself to become unfree. So there, there were some, details, but I think 
the disagreements as they existed were mostly in, in the weeds. They were in the details, um, which we spent a lot of time on. We tried to get that right, but we didn't have any, any big disagreements. And a lot of where we had those disagreements turned into actually finding the point that we thought reflected the community. Like, there are various points that we had, like, long conversations about direction and so many hours talking about specific words. <laughs> um, but I think in the end it worked out for, like, representing where people are. Yeah, and I can say as, like, the board members sitting in and, and trying to, right, like, be external but helping out, I think, I think this was the perfect example, and I'm sure that we could have been even more perfect, but right, we're all kind of starting off at a certain phase, where, you, where I saw this as kind of like the microclimate between different folks with very different views, different backgrounds, coming in and trying their best to think about themselves, think about where they're coming from, think about the community, and think about the folks that are different than them inside of the community. So for me, at the end of the day, while there was a lot of discussions, um, you know, you could probably, if we like AI'd and data science this, you can see like the things that we talked about the most probably were the things that we invested the most into. I think that was more of a norming and forming mechanism where it was like everyone comes in with their opinions and slowly this Play-Doh ends up looking like something after an X amount of time. Um, I'll jump in with one bit, one further bit. Our ultimate goal was how to get many people with very different opinions, perspectives, um, outcomes, interests to be able to work well together within this community. And so the structure, again, was minimum structure to help give enough guidance that you all will be able to mold what you need going forward, but you can do it by working together as opposed to pulling against one another in different ways. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to just mention we have about eight to ten more minutes. If folks like raise their hands, I'll notice you, and then I'll make sure to call you out for the questions when we uh, are doing that. But I can keep asking questions from the interwebs. Uh, Christian. <laughs> um, can we do a test on the value thing? I read it uh, on the website. Um, so something I have uh, on my bucket list of where we need to do something technical later, where the value thing could be coming in, would be the stable evolution star, uh, stuff, where having to make decisions about what backporting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there are a couple of examples where suddenly packages disappear from the stable tree because they're insecure. Is that a moment where I should be invoking the, hey, stable evolution is a core value. We should be using that here. Ooh, that's a great question. I love that. Thank you. My unpopular opinion is yes. <laughs> no, it's more popular. 100%. Um, but like, less tongue in cheek. It's the kind of thing where you should be able to have a conversation about those values. And if the decision goes against like a naive reading of them, explain why. Because uh, at the end of the day, as long as everyone comes to cons like as long as there is consensus on something, sure, that's a decision. But like, it is a thing that you should be able to go back to those values and go, well, we say we care about this as a community. Why are we diverging from that? And I can also attest to the fact that for us, when this started, when we were talking about values, it was very important that these values are not something that we plaster on the wall to make us feel good about having values plastered on the wall. Values for us are very actionable. Values for us are hopefully the things that the community can use in a conversation, to Christian's point, to sway the discussion in a way that we feel that the community aligns with more. Right, so it's actually an actionable item. I, I think I also want to say that I feel like these values aren't like a, you can just slap it on anything and to get something you want in, to tilt in that direction. There's like a lot of, like every decision has a lot of arguments, pro, pro and contra, and sometimes it just makes a lot of sense to make a decision that might seem to disagree with a value, but you have a, a ton of arguments for actually doing it that way. I feel, I feel like these values uh, are more like a, a tilting thing when you're like very close to I'm not sure if it's it, if we should do this or we shouldn't do it then you can look at the values and be like oh well the values say that so we should do this or maybe use it as a yeah it's like a guideline right it's like some baseline to the ingredients that we're all going after so it just hopefully helps more folks new and veterans kind of get a vibe for it Right, it, it helps us all keep moving in the same direction and sticking together, right? 
And to Ron's point about uh, the values being something that we actively use, that's something that we thought about a lot on the NCA. You know, we wanted to make sure that the values were something actionable. And so one of the metrics for our own success that we thought about during this process was like, are people actually bringing up the values in real decision making? And we had, we had a interesting interaction that happened a couple of weeks after we put the values out where somebody in a GitHub thread you know, brought up the values to counter one of Sylvan's points. Uh, and we all talked about that at the next meeting and we thought it was great. It, it, was, it was really the values being put into so action. So we removed that value. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, I don't see hands, so next up, oh, hand. Oh, wow, you're making Berber run. Uh, but he's, he's rested after picking up 500 shirts, so it's fine. Hey, uh, I feel that in any large, especially growing and evolving organization, when the values aren't clear, I've seen that as people join and leave and join and leave, Small, tiny, little arguments, maybe in a discussion thread, just happen. And if both people agreed about some single value or explicitly agreed, that wouldn't happen. Could you just to maybe attest to the efficacy of your, val your value list, the Constitution, say that this happens often? Or that, are there examples that you can bring up? What are some specific ones, uh. even random? We spent about two thirds of our time getting to the point of writing that values document. And after we'd agreed on like what our like foundational principles of doing everything else was, it all just kind of fell into place. So yeah, it, I it think helps. I think the, the, the other thing I think is that is that this is all like day one, right? So so it's weird. We're a community, 23 years, but I, I think I mentioned yesterday how many first times we're having like right now live with all of you in the room and all of us kind of in the ecosystem online. This is the first time. And I think this is what the NCA was trying to establish is just like some baseline that can allow all of us to move forward together. So if we come in in a week, 10 weeks, three years, and we notice that there's a different value that aligns better with us or a value that aligns less, then I think that's, that's like the, you know, the whole forming process of making it better. Uh, to, to Danielle's point about spending about two thirds of our time on the values, um, I've generally seen in, in big open source communities, if you can establish values, or even in big communities broadly, if you can establish values and the values move most slowly in their change then that gives you a really good anchor for how the governance and the conversations and the technical choices move around them. So yes, we would love to have people agree with the values and participate in the values and even challenge the values, but those should move much more slowly than participation in a steering committee and changing potentially even parts of the Constitution. Um, or how we do the next election. We may learn a ton from this election. We're learning a ton from this election, let's be clear. Um, we, we'll learn a bunch, and next election, the next election committee will have some, some new changes to make. So the values, I think, will be the most slowly evolving thing, but all of this was written with the idea that it will evolve over time it needs to in order to keep this community fresh and alive and, and delivering what you all want out of it. And we made it really annoying to change the values. We did make it really annoying for this yeah. reason. Yeah. <laughs> and almost like one of our values is stable evolution. Hey. <laughs> it's recursive. Thanks much. Of course. So as we wait for another question, I think, uh, oh, we already have another question. Great. I don't even need to be here. Uh, hey, I don't fully understand how the steering committee works uh, alongside well, with the foundation, like is the, the graph said the steering committee approves new members of the foundation, but who removes members from the foundation? So, so there's, there's How definitely- How long does, does, does the mandate for the foundation? Because steering committee, the mandate is one year, if I understand correctly. Uh, maybe, um, so like there's, uh, I mean, the constitution goes more into detail about how that exactly works. Um, in short, um, it's that uh, we, we decided to introduce terms for board members and after the terms, um, it's, I think, a, uh, there's like some like back and forth where like the, the steering committee can, uh, 
like reapprove some. Uh, I don't. I, I can I can kind of expand a bit on that, and obviously also evolving because most of the focus for the NCA was really the steering committee, and one of the things that we wanted to do as the board was to ensure that there's like a there's like an overlap, and there's still not like some entity that sits on the side, and that it's kind of like a triangle. I like triangles this week. So the way that we're expecting it to work is that once a steering committee comes in place, um, I'm going to be working, you know, as a board uh, with the steering committee to go and define the specific roles that the foundation need. Because the foundation is a bit more situational in terms of like, we technically, you know, need someone in treasury and we need someone in partnership. So there's like specific needs that we need coming in. And once we define those needs, we'll definitely share them very publicly. Again, everything is transparent. And then we'll do kind of like a call for nominations. And then that would work between the board and the steering committee to kind of like help, you know, draft up the first ever rotation of the, of the foundation. And again, then we have the term limits and everything. So that will start becoming its own mechanism that operates. But the way we've been imagining it is like at all times, there's two steering committee members that are actively participating in board functions, especially things like board elections. Uh, so it kind of keeps a very cohesive ecosystem with the board and the community and the steering committee. So well, that's not in the constitution, but yes, that might, yeah. might, might be how, how it works. But may, maybe like to answer very specifically, there is, uh, so I mean, I, I don't want to like, like kick around, there is no way for the steering committee to force a removal of a board member. There is a, they can request removal, they can be very public about it, that we don't want this board member anymore. Um, and but the board can also block that again. Um, it's in the it's in the constitution defined like that. Um, but so the the idea is kind of it's it's kind of a two two key system where a steering committee is uh, is on equal footing with the board, and uh, that's kind of the idea. I think we'll have to more or less cut you off. Awesome. All right. Again, thank you, everybody. We're all around for the rest of today and a huge part of tomorrow. So thank you for coming in super early. I know that wasn't easy. And we have all not been drinking late last night. So hope you have a really successful, good second day. Uh, we are going to do the inaugural like NixCon photo at some point in the afternoon. So keep that in mind if you want to be part of that like packed room that gives everyone else FOMO. Ask us what time. I'll figure it out with uh, the ground crew here. And uh, have a good first day. And thank you to the NCA for joining us.